gathering of humanity in the world recently took place in India. 71 million people came together within a 45-day period at Allahabad to celebrate a sacred bath in the Sangam, the confluence of India's three most sacred rivers, the Ganges, Yamuna and Saraswati. According to astrological calculations, Jupiter enters Aries at the same time that the Sun enters Capricorn once in 12 years. This conjunction of the planets is very favorable for spiritual enlightenment. To celebrate this event, millions of Hindus, yogis and followers of the Vedic tradition gather at the Sangam to celebrate Kumbha Mela, the world's largest act of faith. Kumbha Mela also holds the world record for the largest gathering of human beings in recorded history. Between January the 9th and February the 21st of the year 2001, 71 million people attended the Kumbha Mela. Mark Twain, the American author, visited the Kumbh Mela in 1895 and was deeply moved by what he saw. He said, These pilgrims had come from all over India. Some of them had been months on the way, plodding patiently along in the heat and dust, worn and poor, hungry, but supported and sustained by an unwavering faith and belief. It is wonderful that the power of faith like this can make multitude upon multitude of the old and weak and the young and frail enter without hesitation or complaint upon such incredible journeys and endure the resultant miseries without repining. Faith is indeed a wonderful thing, but what actually is faith? Is it simply a function of the brain or is it something more profound? According to India's greatest spiritual teachers, there is an infinite world guided by faith. That infinite world is beyond this finite world of birth and death. The infinite world is eternal, blissful and full of knowledge. There is no birth or death in that pure plane of life. Faith is that deep inner experience that confirms that such a sublime reality exists. A traveller on the road to the infinite is guided by such faith. They say that faith urges us to approach the higher world, to have hope in the infinite and to leave this world of shadows and dust behind. The plane of infinite reality transcends all the laws of this mundane world. Thus, faith is considered more valuable than human calculation in approaching the infinite. Pilgrims at the Kumbha Mela believe that by taking a holy bath in the Sangam at this time, their karma, or the sins performed in previous lifetimes, will be removed. Thus the soul becomes eligible for liberation and is freed from the cycle of repeated birth and death. Kumbha <laughs> Mela is one of the biggest gathering of the humans on this earth. Kumela has a significance of spirituality. Uh, we 
which is connected with the Holy rivers like Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati. This all of you know, the Saraswati which is flowing underground, Ganga and Yamuna are both meeting here together. So it is the union of the three rivers. One of the oldest and most authoritative scriptures in India, the Bhagavad Gita, describes the soul as a unit of spiritual consciousness that can never be destroyed. The Bhagavad Gita says that only the material body can be destroyed, but that the soul is eternal. Thus, a soul takes birth again and again, accepting one material body after the next, according to one's karma. When the soul is at last free from karma, it is then eligible for liberation. For the enlightened pilgrim at Kumbhamela, all life is sacred because all living things are spirit soul. They consider the human form of life as most sacred because in human life one can realize one's eternal nature. Only in the human form of life can one discover the answers to such questions as Who am I? Where do I come from? And where will I go when this life is over? The faithful know that to become enlightened and liberated is the fundamental goal of human life and to develop the sentiments of divine love for God is the highest stage of enlightenment. It is indeed remarkable to see millions of pilgrims gathered at Kumbh Mela for this purpose. Of the 71 million people that attended the Kumbh Mela, several million of those were sadhus. A sadhu is an ordained holy man. Among those holy men were the Nagas, the famous naked yogis of India. These holy men renounced the world in their search for equilibrium. They hoped to escape the world's concomitant reactions and suffering by their severe practices such as celibacy and renunciation of material possessions. With matted locks of hair, their bodies covered in ashes, carrying tridents and swords, they proceed to the bathing area. Renunciation of material necessities, even to the extreme of renouncing one's clothing, may be a symptom of spiritual advancement. However, extreme renunciation alone is not considered the most important quality of a sadhu. Here at Kumbh Mela, many fear these type of renunciants and consider their nudity a nuisance. Seeing the Nagas in parade, visitors often commented, they make so much noise, shouting and waving their swords and tridents in the air, that it looks more like a show of pride and arrogance than anything really spiritual. Although the Kumbh Mela is by far the world's largest act of faith, it may appear to many people to be the world's largest encampment, with thousands of tents spread out in every direction for as far as the eye can see. 
An entire city of tents is constructed along the bank of the Ganges during Kumbh Mela, complete with roads, street lights, telephone booths, markets and medical and security facilities. Wherever one turns his head at Kumbh Mela, one is sure to find a spectacle for the eyes. From the weird and wonderful to the sacred and sublime, whatever India has to offer, one can see it at the Kumbh Mela. An outstanding characteristic of many pilgrims and sadhus is the vertical lines of yellow, white and red clay called tilak that covers their forehead. These vertical lines indicate that one is devoted to the Supreme Lord Vishnu or Krishna. The tilak is applied when performing rituals and meditation and is a traditional part of spiritual culture in India. With elegance and grace, elephants make their way to the Kumbh Mela festival grounds. One elephant can do the work of 100 men. The camel is a hearty beast of burden used for centuries in India. Carrying heavy loads of firewood, tents and food on their backs, they form a lifeline from the outside world to the Kumbh Mela. Although the festival management had organized many restaurants at the campsite and several institutions distributing free meals daily, many sadhus prefer to prepare their own food on simple wood fires. A favorite was the traditional Indian flatbread, the chapati. The market areas offer all the necessities and luxuries of Kumbh Mela life, including brass pots, bowls, items of worship, fresh fruits and vegetables, beads for meditation, incense, inexpensive but warm woolen blankets, and every type of traditional Indian clothing. More than 5,000 spiritual institutions pitch their camps at Kumbh Mela. Many of these institutions constructed large tents and attracted thousands of visitors to their stage performances and revival meetings. In the daytime, the sound of mantras being chanted in front of the sacred fire could be heard coming from hundreds of tents. In some tents, lectures on the topic of God consciousness were given, and in other tents, Vedic songs and sacred hymns were sung.
many sadhus arrived at the Kumbha Mela on a variety of conveyances, carrying ornate banners and singing sacred songs in praise of God. Many different traditions and sects join a parade that extends for miles. Each in their own uniquely decorated carriages, their gurus or spiritual leaders are seated regally on thrones of silver or even gold. These processions begin at the various campsites and deliver the gurus and their followers to the Holy Sangam for a bath. Bands play, People dance in jubilation and colorful flags and banners fly above the crowd. India is unique in arranging such huge processions simply to offer proper respects to saintly persons. Many sadhus smear their bodies with ashes and Ganges water as a sign of their renunciation. Women, as well as men, shave their heads at the beginning of the festival as a gesture of their surrender and humility. Often unruly, the procession is composed of men, women and even children pursuing the path of liberation. Theatrical troops performed religious dramas, and musicians, dancers, drummers, and even martial artists entertained the eager crowds of pilgrims. Setting up camps and mobile temples, many sects held kathas, or readings from Vedic literatures, accompanied by lively kirtans, chants, and spirited lectures by their gurus and holy men. <laughs> Rassi, 
These Manipuri artists are trained from youth in the culture of the punk. A drum which presides over all rites of passage in the mountain kingdom from where they have come. Famous throughout India, Manipur is known for its performing arts. In the dance performance known as Krishna Leela, boys play the parts of both male and female divinities. The dance drama is more religious ritual than entertainment. Martial arts. Bhagavan Sri Krishna Sabi Kalaum and Nipunati. Bhajan, or Kirtan, is devotional chanting of God's names, accompanied by musical instruments. The leader begins the chant while the audience responds.
With pomp and ceremony, the gurus are received as they enter the Sangam or visit the festival sites. And that today will stand as a historic moment in the path toward global peace, global harmony, and global unity. Dalai Lama Ji Maharaj, who is in your own mind, is a God of Dharma. The Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama Ji Maharaj. Now just my humble sort of request or appeal is <laughs> everywhere, whenever I go, I participate in some religious function or even a political function. Everybody's mouth word of peace, always there. But now question is, peace must develop within ourselves. Religious leaders gathered together for a moment of prayer and worship of Mother Ganges. Wave after wave, the pilgrims form a veritable river of humanity that flows onto the banks of the Ganges. Many come by foot, carrying their bedrolls and camping equipment in heavy bundles on their heads. Pilgrims come from the remotest parts of India, speaking different languages and dialects, wearing distinctive markings on their foreheads, donning various types of dress and observing different manners and customs all for the purpose of taking the holy bath in the sacred waters of the Ganges at the auspicious time of Kumbh Mela. For many, this is a lifetime dream fulfilled. From the strange and bizarre to the beautiful and charming, Kumbh Mela holds something for everyone. Whether you're seeking a spiritual path or just curious about this unparalleled celebration of Hinduism, you can be assured of an experience never to be forgotten. <laughs> 